It's pretty rare to have actors appear in two movies released simultaneously. If two films are released close to each other, it's safe to assume they were shot around the same time. As a result, it's pretty unusual that actors end up competing with themselves for box office revenue, and extremely rare for an actor to have two acclaimed performances in one year. Despite the odds, sometimes this is exactly what happens. So today, we're gonna look at actors who competed against themselves for box office revenue and awards. Sometimes when movies compete against each other, it works out well for both movies, and sometimes not. Hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all things cinematic at Screen Rant. And don't forget the notification squad. Can you guess what movie these emojis represent? Wait till the end and we'll give you the answer. The same cell. And I acted. You excuse yourself! Andrew Garfield. When it comes to award season, you can bet Andrew Garfield is in consideration for Hollywood's biggest accolades. Since his role in The Social Network, Garfield has gone from one strong performance to another, and 2016 saw Garfield's movies competing against each other for Oscar glory. 2016 was arguably his best year so far, having Oscar-worthy performances in Martin Scorsese's somber Silence and Mel Gibson's bloody war drama Hacksaw Ridge. Both films dealt heavily on the subject of faith and were huge critical hits, but Hacksaw Ridge stole much of Silence's thunder at the box office. Get it? Silence? Thunder? Anyway. While Silence was critically acclaimed, it signaled a departure from what modern audiences have come to expect of Scorsese, and a smaller, more subdued marketing campaign led to a poor box office performance. Silence didn't even make back its budget. Conversely, Hacksaw Ridge made a lot of money, and had far more people watching it. Despite an Oscar-worthy performance, Garfield was not nominated for his role in Silence by any major body, largely due to the aforementioned popularity of Hacksaw Ridge. A win would have been a huge get for Garfield, but regrettably, this was not to be. He wasn't recognized for the great job he did in Silence, and he lost out to Casey Affleck in the Best Actor category. You didn't sleep again, did you? No. You know me. I never sleep. Amy Adams. Amy Adams had about the most successful year possible in 2016. She was in the critically panned but financially successful Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. On top of that massive payday, she also got to truly flex her acting muscles with Arrival and Nocturnal Animals. Both movies were released in October, five days apart, which meant they were in direct competition financially. Not only that, but as they shared a star, it meant that fans of Adams could be split as to what they saw that weekend. Ultimately, Arrival ended up with a far higher gross than Tom Ford's Dark Thriller. Although, Adams was the real winner either way. When award season came around, Amy Adams did fantastically as her three movies competed for similar awards. She earned a People's Choice Award for Favorite Dramatic Movie Actress for Batman vs Superman. She was also nominated for a Satellite Award for her role in Nocturnal Animals. Arrival was her biggest success, where she was nominated for a Saturn Award and won the Palm Springs International Film Festival Award. Unfortunately, despite appearing in one of the most successful films of the year and in two of the most critically acclaimed of the year, Amy Adams was sadly not nominated for the Academy Award. For those of you who love ad-free viewing and free things, we're excited to announce the Premium Network. The Premium gets you early access to videos from Screen Rant, CBR, The Gamer, and many other great channels. Literally thousands of videos in one place with ad-free browsing. How sweet is that? Sign up for free by clicking the link to start binge-watching videos from your favorite channels. Say your name, Blue. <laughs> Mahershala Ali. Mahershala Ali has made waves in the acting world as of late. He appeared in the hugely successful Netflix dramas House of Cards and Luke Cage. He went on to win the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in 2016, becoming the first Muslim actor to do so. Hidden Figures was released at a similar time, and in some countries was playing alongside Moonlight, which had a very long release due to its small scale. Hidden Figures made far more money at the box office, with a bigger marketing campaign and more recognizable cast. It was at the awards ceremonies where the real competition began. Due to both movies featuring majority African-American casts, they were frequently pitted against each other at awards ceremonies such as the African-American Film Critics Association. Moonlight won Best Film of the Year, Best Independent Film, and Best Supporting Actor at the AAFCA. In fact, it won everything it was nominated for. Moonlight also won Best Adapted Screenplay at the Academy Awards, where it beat out Hidden Figures. As for Mahershala Ali, well, he was laughing from start to finish. On top of the Oscar win, he also won the SAG Award, the Critics' Choice Award, and was nominated for the Golden Globe and BAFTA. While his role in Hidden Figures likely won't be as well remembered, it certainly gave him a lot of money to go alongside his newfound recognition. Well, this is your fault. They did not need to die. 
My fault they attacked me. How am I the bad guy? Your fault! Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana had the best year an actor or actress could hope for in 2009. She appeared in the hugely successful Star Trek and James Cameron's Avatar, which still remains the highest grossing film of all time. When not even Star Wars The Force Awakens can dethrone your most successful movie, you know you're doing well. While the movies were released at different times, neither really wanted to compete with the other for box office gross. They certainly feuded when it came to awards. The two were both nominated for Best Sound and Best Sound Editing at the 82nd Academy Awards in 2009. Although, ironically, the two movies lost both awards to The Hurt Locker, which won most of the awards that year. They also competed to get the Oscar for Best Visual Effects, which, of course, Avatar won soundly. As for Saldana, well, her performance in Avatar earned her the award for Best Supporting Actress at the Black Reel Award nomination for Avatar, and her performance in both Avatar and Star Trek earned her a nomination for the Best Year in Film at the ALMA Awards, as well as a Breakout Actress nomination at the People's Choice Awards. Her Guardians of the Galaxy co-star Chris Pratt will find himself in a similar situation in 2018, as Jurassic World The Fallen Kingdom and Avengers Infinity War will be competing against each other. Peter does like to reach above his station, doesn't he? Russell Crowe, a great actor who can often be hit or miss with his film choices. Nowhere is that more evident than in 2014, when he appeared in both the critically panned Winter's Tale and the successful Noah and the Water Diviner. While Crowe's performance in Winter's Tale is by no means bad, it was almost completely forgotten thanks to its biblical rival. Noah was the biggest opening weekend that Crowe has ever had. Not only that, but it did pretty well with critics. It was praised for bringing the religious epic to the big screen in a way that felt grand and, well, biblical in proportion. It avoided preaching, while at the same time taking the characters from the story of Noah's Ark and giving them new life. Winter's Tale, on the other hand, did poorly. Not only was it critically panned, with only 13% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it had a poor box office gross, with only 7 7.3 million in its opening weekend. It also never managed to win any awards. Although, Crow was nominated for Best Actor at the Teen Choice Awards for Noah, and Noah in general garnered numerous awards not related to him. The Water Diviner won Best Film, with Crow nominated for Best Actor at the AACTA, while it shared Best Film with the Babadook. At least, it was a decent year for Crow. You're a private investigator? <clears throat> Look, there's 20 bucks in there, all right? Just take it. Ryan Gosling. 2016 was as good for Ryan Gosling as it was for Amy Adams and Mahershala Ali. Not only did Gosling get the starring role in the acclaimed La La Land, but he also appeared in the fantastic Shane Black crime movie The Nice Guys. While the films did not compete financially, they did critically. Gosling's performances were lauded for both movies. La La Land saw Gosling nominated for the Academy Award, British Academy Film Award, Screen Actors Guild, and AACTA. While he missed, he did win the Golden Globe and Santa Barbara International Film Award for Best Actor. Unfortunately, the sheer magnitude of La La Land caused a lot of critics' associations to overlook his great performance in The Nice Guys. Both show different sides to his talent. While The Nice Guys shows off more of his range as a pure actor, having a far more characterized performance when compared to his role as Seb, La La Land featured more aspects of performing. La La Land required Gosling to not only sing, but dance some pretty difficult jazz routines. It really was a toss-up as to what you value more, pure acting or all-around performance. While La La Land stole most of the spotlight, Ryan Gosling did win the People's Choice Award for Favorite Comedic Actor. Now we just want to see how he fares in Blade Runner. So you, you won't forgive me, but you, you forgave Pop. No, he's just some old vet that I train with. You know, he means nothing to me. Tom Hardy. Widely considered one of, if not the greatest actor working today, Tom Hardy broke through into the mainstream with his role in Inception, and the announcement that he would be in The Dark Knight Rises. While many viewed Warrior as a Bane audition tape, this didn't help it at the box office, where it competed with another Tom Hardy movie, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. While Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy was a great success, in part due to the name recognition, thanks to the famous book it was based on, Warrior really struggled at the box office. While Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy won the box office competition, the awards were a little closer. Closer, with Tom Hardy competing against himself for the two films. Hardy's supporting role in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy garnered nominations for Best Supporting Actor for a British Independent Film Award and the Georgia Film Critics Association Award. Hardy won the Women's Critics Circle Award for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. That year, he was also nominated for his performance in Warrior, meaning he competed against himself in the most literal sense. Warrior saw Hardy win the Best Actor from the Nevada Film Critics Society, and saw him nominated for Best Actor at both the Satellite Awards and the Teen Choice Awards. It's pretty rare to see Hardy give a performance that doesn't get nominated for some sort of award, so we can only imagine what's next. Marco Robbie. 
Margot Robbie has a knack for getting praise in movies that are broadly disliked. While as an actress, she has been well acclaimed for roles like The Wolf of Wall Street and Z for Zachariah, 2016 saw her appear in both The Legend of Tarzan and Suicide Squad. While Suicide Squad did win the Academy Award for Best Makeup and Hairstyling, it found itself competing with Legend of Tarzan in the worst way possible. They were often competing in a race to the bottom with Worst Of awards. Suicide Squad alone won two Razzie Awards. Margot Robbie managed to win both Best Supporting Actress awards from sources such as Golden Schmooz and the Critics' Choice Awards, while simultaneously winning the Alliance of Women Film Journalist Award for Actress Most in Need of a New Agent. Unfortunately for Legend of Tarzan, it didn't manage to get any positive awards. Despite having a high higher Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb rating than Suicide Squad. The popularity of DC as a brand managed to get Suicide Squad more money and more awards than Legend of Tarzan ever got, even if some of them were negative. It just goes to show that critics and even audience reactions have a complicated relationship with awards politics. Five years ago, you didn't care about telling the truth. You, all your family, you just assumed it for all my education. I was still little better than a servant, still not to be trusted. James McAvoy. James McAvoy was typecast for a long time as the romantic lead. In 2007, he found himself playing a romantic lead in two films, Penelope and the now classic Atonement. While he played the lead in both films, they were two very different types of romance film, with Penelope being a light-hearted romantic comedy and Atonement being a very dramatic romantic drama with the backdrop of a war film. Of course, critically and commercially, Atonement blew Penelope out of the water. Penelope's long release didn't help matters, as certain regions had the films playing side by side each other. Despite Penelope being finished a year before. This meant that the two McAvoy films were in direct competition in some places, and with Atonement being the cinematic monster it turned out to be, Penelope barely stood a chance. James McAvoy won no awards for Penelope, and the movie was largely forgotten a short time after. Atonement, on the other hand, saw James McAvoy nominated for 14 awards, including the European Film Award, the British Independent Film Award, the BAFTA, and the Golden Globe. It's arguably the movie that launched James McAvoy into stardom, and without it, we wouldn't be seeing him in movies like The X-Men and Unbreakable Film Series. Jamie Foxx Nobody on this list has had a better year critically than Jamie Foxx had in 2004, when he appeared in both Collateral and Ray. Two of his most critically acclaimed roles ever came both in the same year, with Fox playing a taxi driver caught up as Tom Cruise's hostage and playing the blind music icon and superstar Ray Charles. 2004 saw Fox himself nominated for both roles, often in the same ceremony. Fox won both Black Reel Awards for Supporting and Leading Actor. He won the Critics' Choice Award for Ray, while also being nominated for Best Supporting Actor. His performance as Ray Charles led to him receiving the Academy Award, Golden Globe, Screen Actors Guild, and Critics' Choice Awards for Best Actor. This made him the second actor to win all five major lead awards for the same performance. Not only that, but he was the only actor to also win the Golden Globe for musical or comedy, as opposed to drama. He was also nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Academy Awards for his role in Collateral, meaning he was also the second actor to have been nominated for both acting Oscars in the same year, after Al Pacino. Both Collateral and Ray were nominated for Best Film Editing, although both lost to The Aviator. Few actors have had a year quite as great as Jamie Foxx. That's all we've got time for today. Are there any that we missed? We'd like to know, because this sort of thing doesn't happen very often. Also, remember that quiz question? Well, the answer was... Did you get it right? Comment below and let us know. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more videos from our playlist just like this. Thanks for watching.